Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. Today, I am going to give the summary in two appeals. They are Royal Men Cap Society and Tomlinson Blake and Shannon and Rampersat. I'm Lady Arden. I was a member of the panel on those two appeals and I give the leading judgment. Uh, with me is my colleague, Lord Stevens, and he will be presenting the summary of the judgment of the court in a, another case, G and G, and that will start at the end of this summary. So the Supreme Court today delivers its judgments dismissing the two appeals that I have mentioned. They are both related to the calculation of national minimum wage, uh, which I will sometimes refer to as NMW. The appellants in both cases were carers, and they claimed that they should be paid the NMW for each of the hours of their night shift, regardless of whether they were awake or asleep. There are two appellants, Mrs. Tomlinson Blake and Mr. Shannon. They both look after people who cannot look after themselves. And this involves working night shifts. During those night shifts, in the periods in question, their employers required them to remain at their place of work and permitted them to sleep unless they had to deal with some emergency. For example, if one of the persons for whom they cared made a noise and dis was disturbing others. Mrs. Tomlinson Blake looked after two men who were supported by MenCap in their own home. She was only woken occasionally over a period of some 16 months. As she put it, she had to keep a listening ear out during the whole night. For each night, she received an allowance of £22.35 and one hour's pay of £6.70. She claimed she should have been paid the NMW, which is an hourly rate, for each of the hours of the night shift, as I say, even if she was asleep. Mr. Shannon lived in a studio in an elderly person's residential care home. He was an on-call night care assistant. He had to be in the studio from 10 p.m. till 7 a.m. That was the employer's requirement. He had to respond to any request for assistance by the night care worker at the home. In exchange, he had the accommodation with all the utilities provided free of charge, together with 50 pounds per week, rising later to 90 pounds per week. He was only very rarely asked to help the night care worker. He too claimed that he should have been paid the NMW for each hour of the night shift. As of today's date, the NMW is £8.91 pence per hour for most persons over 23 years of age, and the amount is due to rise in April. At times relevant to this appeal, the NMW was rather less. I'm going to start with the legislative provisions. As I have already mentioned, the NMW is an hourly rate of pay, which is set by government and which applies with some exceptions to all workers. The legislation establishing the NMW is the National Minimum Wage Act 1998. There are also regulations which deal with the calculation of the national minimum wage. These were originally the National Minimum Wage Regulations 1999, but with effect from the 6th of April 2015, they were replaced by the National Win Minimum Wage Regulations 2015. Now I turn to the judgments and reasoning. The Court of Appeal rejected both claims. The judges of the Court of Appeal held that the National Minimum Wage Regulations contained an exception for sleeping workers, such as these appellants were. And that exception meant that the only hours for which they should be paid the NMW during their night shifts were the hours for which they were awake for the purpose of working. Both appellants appealed with the permission of the Supreme Court. Now, there's no material difference between the 1999 regulations and the 2015 regulations in any relevant respect. Both sets of regulations divide work into four different categories. Mrs. Tomlinson Blake was performing what is called time work. Mr. Shannon was performing salaried hours work. 
The same provisions about sleep-in workers in substance apply to both types of work in both sets of regulations. Both sets of regulations extend the meaning of work. They make it clear that both types of for both types of work, time spent and salaried hours, time spent working includes time when a worker is required to be available for work at or near his or her place of business, place of work. That means that that time is included in the calculation of hours for the NMW purposes. There is an exception for working at home, which the tribunals applied in Mr. Shannon's case. In addition, in each case, the wording is qualified by a special provision about a sleep-in worker. That is a worker who by arrangement sleeps at or near his or her place of work and is provided with suitable facilities for sleeping. In the words of the 2015 regulations, time when such a worker is available only includes hours, and here I quote, when the worker is awake for the purpose of working. This court has to interpret the relevant regulations in line with the intention of Parliament as expressed in the language it used. But this court can take account not simply of the words that Parliament has used, but also, in some circumstances, the materials which set out the policy aim that Parliament was seeking to achieve. The National Minimum Wage Act 1998 provides that government should have the ability to remit issues to a statutory body called the Low Pay Commission. This is an independent body with representatives drawn from both sides of industries and expert members. It conducts investigations and it takes evidence. The National Minimum Wage Act gives the recommendations of the Low Pay Commission a special status. If the government refers a matter to it, then under the National Minimum Wage Act 1998, the government is bound to implement the Low Pay Commission's recommendations requiring implementation by regulation, unless it goes to Parliament and explains why it is not doing so. This special status is significant in the present appeals because before the 1999 regulations were drafted, the Low Pay Commission, at the request of government, made recommendations, including one about sleep in workers. In particular, the Commission recommended that sleep in workers, such as Mrs. Tomlinson Blake and Mr. Shannon are, should not receive the national minimum wage for every hour of their night shift, but should receive a sum as an allowance from their employers for hours spent on the night shift, unless they were awake for the purpose of working. The allowance, of course, would have to be agreed between the employer and the worker. If and to the extent that the worker was in fact awake during the shift for the purpose of working, their time would be included in for national minimum wage purposes. The Low Pay Commission did not therefore recommend that the sleep-in worker should be treated as entitled to the NMW for the entire night shift for every hour of it. The government accepted the recommendation and in the judgment of the court, the provisions for sleep-in workers can and should be interpreted to give effect to the recommendation of the Low Pay Commission. The judgments cover a number of other matters. The exception for sleep-in workers only applies to workers who are expected to sleep and are provided with facilities and not to those workers who are required to be available for working on a night shift and who are expected to work whenever called upon to do so. For example, an engineer who is on call at the place of work in case machinery stops, even if he is allowed to nap occasionally during the time he's waiting, he's not, he is ex not expected to sleep, uh, but to be available for work. The court considers a number of previously decided case, cases, and in some of those, the courts were asked to interpret the regulations without the assistance of the recommendations of the Low Pay Commission. They concluded that, it, that the sleep-in workers would actually be working for their entire night shift, even when they were asleep. The court considers that those cases should be overruled. One of those cases, British Nursing Association and the Inland Revenue, 
decided in 2002 by the Court of Appeal, held that workers who had to answer telephone calls even during the night were working through the night as they were doing at night the same task as they would be doing in the day. All the members of this court considered that that decision should be overruled, but they have different reasons for doing so. I am satisfied that the Court of Appeal in that case failed to appreciate the fundamental distinction made by the regulations between actually working and being available for work. Lord Carnworth, with whom Lord Wilson agrees, considers that the Court of Appeal could not properly have concluded that the employees were working for the whole of their shifts. Lord Kitchen considers that the regulations had to be interpreted as a whole and that the sleep-in provision could not be avoided by saying that the workers were performing work. Accordingly, this court dismisses the appeals of Mrs. Tomlinson Blake and Mr. Shannon. It follows that Mrs. Tomlinson Blake will be unable to bring an action against MENCAP to the extent it is based on arrears, unpaid arrears of remuneration, which she contended arose because her remuneration for the night shift was less than the national minimum wage if calculated on the basis of every hour of the night shift. Mr. Shannon will likewise be unable to pursue his claim for damages following his dismissal on the basis that he ought to have been paid the NMW for each hour of the night shift. The hearing of these two appeals, and I'm now turning to a separate matter, was presided over by the late Lord Kerr of Tonnemore. Uh, he passed away on the 1st December 2020, and the court in their judgments pay tribute to him. It follows that the judgments handed down today are the judgments of the four remaining panel, members of the panel of justices who heard this appeal. Thank you everyone for listening to me. <laughs>